What's up, y'all? Ooh. It's a pretty day today. I'm going to ask you to try to get some things done. But, um, I just wanted to need a bird to stop pooping on my plants. Um, anyway, let's get to the matters at hand. So, I want to come on here and talk to y'all about uh, since it's spring, um, I know some people is already planting, especially people in the South, they already planting, but, um, you know, this information still could be useful even to those in the future that might look for this information. So, first of all, don't mind my hair. Your girl been so busy, I ain't even had time to do my hair. That's how pitiful it is, like, real talk, like, anyway, um, so, yeah. Let's talk about seed starting. So, um, should you start seeds inside? Should you start them outside? Should you start them in a greenhouse? You know, what's what's the pros, cons, benefits, drawbacks to those types of things? So, um, basically, I do not start seeds inside for uh, a couple of reasons. Um, I'm not against starting seeds inside. Um, especially if you live in a climate where your season is shorter, you almost have to start your seeds, if not inside your home, inside a greenhouse or something, because your season just isn't long enough. My season is long enough to where I'm not really pressed about um, starting seeds inside. So people always ask me, you know, would you consider living somewhere else or some other zone that's colder? No, not really. Um, I hate the heat. I hate the mosquitoes. I hate all that. But I am so in love with the long growing season of the South. And believe it or not, there are people whose growing season is longer than mine. Even though I grow year round, um, people more South than me, their growing season is even longer. But I'll be honest and tell you, I don't think I want to live any more Southern than where I am because of the heat. Um, because the people whose seasons are even longer than mine, it can, depending on where you are, be substantially hotter in the summer. Uh, Miami comes to mind because when it's 100 degrees in January, and I don't know if that's normal or not, but the last time I went to Miami, it was 98 in January. Unacceptable unacceptable for me i'm sorry it just is so um so yeah some of this stuff that's more southern than me or and i won't even say just southern a desert climate you wouldn't pay me to live in a desert climate either um not because i don't like the desert i think it's gorgeous um and when you're in between the city like for instance i went to Ari the last time i went to arizona i went like in march or april um it was kind of cold at night but during the day it was really nice and really gorgeous um no bugs <laughs> like march here bugs galore um i like that about it but growing in a desert is it's fairly hard to do i'm not saying it's it's impossible um but it's fairly hard to do um even people who are professional homesteaders caution people against homesteading in desert climates am i saying it's not possible no indeed anything you put your mind to is possible um it's just not something that i'd really um like to get into but uh but yeah so like i said i don't feel pressed to start seeds indoors because my season is long enough um more than long enough um even when i'm late to the game on tomatoes starting tomatoes um i still have plenty of season to get plenty of tomatoes um, cause oftentimes I don't pull my plants until October, November, something like that. It depends on what the weather does. Um, pulled them a little earlier, uh, in 2020 because the weather did something weird. Cause the end of 2020 was, the weather was weird. We got snow way earlier. I mean, it didn't stick around, but snow is enough to kill tomatoes. Um, and then of course, you know, we had the ice storm in February, um, I won't say that that was super, super weird. The amount of snow was weird, um, but we get that kind of weather um, about every five years or so, or so, because it seems like I remember five or six years ago, we didn't get that volume of snow, but we definitely got snow. So people who think that um, we don't get snow, no, we do. Um, 
It's just, it was the volume and how long it stayed below freezing. That I've never experienced. Staying below freezing and never rising above freezing for almost seven days, um, that's never happened in my lifetime. And I'm 36, for those wondering. So, um, and I'm not saying I'm, you know, the oldest person in the world, but I'm just saying, 36 years, it never got below freezing and stayed below. Now, I'm not crazy. My granny told me about different storms and things in her lifetime, and she lived to be 90, so she had, you know, 60 years on me. Um, so, um, so, you know, she would tell me about stuff like that. And yeah, periodically, we do get that kind of stuff. Um, did it stay below freezing seven degrees? I don't remember, seven days? I don't remember her saying that, but I do remember her talking about various ice storms and things that we've had that gotten bad. Because I remember, yeah, like I said, five or six years ago, it was a real bad ice storm. Because as a matter of fact, it tore the electrical, a, a limb fell on electrical line and ripped the electrical meter clean off my granny's house. So we have had ice storms. I remember vividly in high school, we had an ice storm that we were out of school one No, actually we went to school. The ice storm struck. The temperature dropped rapidly. The ice storm struck. And a lot of us was kind of stranded at school because the school buses was stuck at the place where they parked the school buses. Like they was all iced into the parking lot. So... So yeah, we, we do get a little stuff like that. But um so yeah. But so the weather was weird, so you know. But anyway, um I don't start seasons inside, like I said, because of my growing season, but number well, the, the number one reason is my cats will dig up everything. Um they don't dig in my beds outside. But for some reason if I plant anything inside, their their first line of defense to defend themselves against a harmless house plant is to dig it up no and i don't know why they do it like i even brought catnip in for them one time like i was growing catnip in this pot outside and i brought it in for them like oh yeah you guys can chew on the catnip and or roll on it or whatever yeah i woke up the next morning the catnip was uprooted there was dirt everywhere and then they did that to an aloe plant they dug it up and dirt everywhere and so after they did that twice, I'm like, okay, well, you can't keep doing the same thing and expecting different results. Like, <laughs> no. So, um, house plants, it, 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 it ain't gonna work for me. Um, just for the sheer notion of the cats. And thankfully, I live somewhere where I don't have to start outside. But if I did, what I would do is that I would, I would invest in a greenhouse. Now, let me say this. Y'all have probably seen my little cheap greenhouse that is ripped to shreds. Um, I, the reason why I bought, that's actually the second one. The first one, the cover got ripped to shreds. I still have the frame, but the plastic got so um, hot on it. And I'm going to caution, I'm going to say this to anybody living in a climate that gets over 100 degrees regularly in the summer or close to 100. If you get those cheap greenhouses that are anywhere from 20 to 40, 50 bucks, they have the plastic cover. You can get them on Amazon or various little places. The poles are metal, but they go into a plastic kind of brace that grows, goes across horizontally. Know this, that plastic over time with the sun is going to warp on you. That It's going to get soft and warp on you. Those are the drawbacks to those. Um, if you can stick with the ones that are pretty much all metal and they just have the, the plastic couplings, I found that the couplings are fine. Because that greenhouse, the frame is fine. It's the cover that ripped. Now, I'm going to tell you now, in my climate, and I didn't even have mine in full sun. I had mine in, uh, it's, it's sun half the day and shade half the day. My cover lasted one year before I started to see the beginnings of tears. By the second year, it was severely torn. And this is the third year and it's done and gone. Cause y'all see, I didn't I done clamp the shower curtain to the front and I have news. The ice storm finished the shower curtain off. It's, that thing is standing wide open now. So, um, I'm not going to get rid of it. What I'm going to do is uh, my greenhouse that I'm going to put together, I'm going to put that frame inside there and use it like a plant rack or whatever, you know, because it's got shelves on it. So it's still some use to me. Um, but, yeah, you can get replacement covers. Um, they tell me from the company. I haven't tried. I'm not interested because that little cheap plastic, real talk, I own a sewing machine. I could buy better plastic at Hobby Lobby, which is marine grade. Uh, bimini plastic that you see on boats i could get that and it's much better as uv protected and it would be way better plastic it's the same kind of plastic they pretty much use for greenhouses well it's not exactly the same it's actually more durable 
Um, but yeah, I could just get that and sew it on my sewing machine. Like, so, so I would rather do that and have have a cover that lasts five, six years or more than to get a replacement cover from them that's still gonna last me one year before I start to see it disintegrating again. So um, that's that on them little greenhouses. So if you're wondering about those little greenhouses, that's the best thing to know. Also, make sure you anchor them down. The wind blow, they gone. Um, I have cinder blocks on mine, on the bottom of mine. Um, make sure you, like, if, you, if you're not sure, put too many. Um, that's the best thing I can tell you. Like, the, the frames that go across the ground, put the cinder blocks across those. Um, and, and that should do it. Um, there are other ways to anchor it, but to me, that's, if you don't have cinder blocks, use bricks. Use, like I said, if, you, if you're not sure, do too many of them. And then grab it and shake it. And if it move, it mm -mm, you need some more. Like, because <laughs> I'm telling you, the wind blow, psh, it's gone. It's like a parachute. It's gone. Um, and the last thing you want to do is put all your plants in there, hard work, and your, all your seedlings and stuff, and it blow, and all your stuff fall, and everything's everywhere, and you just, all your work went up in smoke. So, that's that on the greenhouses. That would be, if I needed to start seeds early, that would be what I would do. Now, keep in mind. It's only so much you can do in those greenhouses. Um, honestly, people that are in cold, cold, cold climates, that have all this snow and stuff, the best thing I've seen them do is, um, uh, what do they call it when you use the, the bottles? I did it one year. Um, direct something? Mm -mm. Lies. Uh, it's the, the term for it is escaping me, but it's when they take the like milk jug containers or juice containers or whatever and you s sow your seeds in there and um you know you put the top back on whether you tape it or whether you there's one dude he just pushes his down over it and um no tape are re uh, required um and you can actually leave those out in the snow and they create their own little mini greenhouse and i'm gonna tell you the best i, I actually find that to be the best and i think you're gonna get the best plants out of that why because those plants are already somewhat acclimated to um, outside. When you start stuff inside, I've done it before. Um, I'm gonna be honest. I'll let hardening off and stuff. Now, if you have nothing better to do with your time to harden off plants, go ahead. But the process of hardening off plants, you know, bring it outside for a little bit, taking it back in, bring it outside for a little bit longer, taking it back in, bring it outside for longer, taking it. If you got a personality like me, that ain't gonna work. Cause let me tell you what happens. I lay my stuff outside and I get to doing 45 other projects. And I forget all about that, uh, about them seedlings. And when I come back, the sun has roasted them to a crisp. Like, it, that just don't work for me. So when I start my stuff outside, it's already acclimated to the sun. There's no need to harden off. There is no extra steps. It's no in and out. It's no, like I said, I understand if you have to do that. But I'm just telling you what I do on, you know, why I don't do it. Also, I find that seeds that actually germinate the way nature intended them to germinate, which is out in nature, outside, where they will be grown, I find that those plants are actually hardier, tougher plants. Um, they're already windproofed. They're already um, going to grow. Like, like there's no, tr it's like, okay, for instance, if you took a child and you raised them to the age of five, in a plastic bubble and it never went outside and at five years old you decide to let them go outside in the sun what you think gonna happen it probably not gonna be good because they've never been outdoors they've never been in the open air they never been, you feel what i'm saying like you try that if you want to <laughs> like the wind might blow and they might have an issue so um it's the same thing to me with these plants like i just rather for them to do what they do naturally um like i said when all else fails, or if I'm trying to get a plant that likes it a little hotter, get it started earlier, I, I would do it in a greenhouse situation. Um, or, like I said, the, the, the bottles with the with the tops that I still can't think of the name of. So, I don't, I don't, winter sowing. Winter sowing. You know, sometimes the brain of mind works. Sometimes. Every blue moon, it you know, it clicks into another gear. But anyway, um, winter sowing. If you guys are Google winter sowing, there's a million people doing it. Um, but it's pretty much, like I said, the same concept. You start your stuff. I seen a woman, 
she was in Ohio, she leave her stuff out in the straight snow. Like the bottles and stuff be sitting in the snow. But because it's so, it creates that greenhouse effect in that, in that bottle, her seedlings were fine. Her plants did, her garden is generally amazing. Um, so yeah, winter sowing would be another pro to that. Another reason I don't start seeds inside fungus nets. Okay, so am I the only one that's not doing these bugs in the house like that? Like, like I'm going to be for real. Some of these people putting up with too much. Like, you really willing to put up with them bugs in your house like that? Okay, well, you on a different level than me because I'm not. Because I'm not going to be all day. I'm not doing it. No. I'm not living like that. I'm sorry. Now, no offense to anyone out there who may enjoy that. You know, but I'm not a horse or a cow. You know how they swat their tail all day long, batting them flies? I'm not, I'm not a bovine. I just really, I'm not, not doing it. Um, every single commercial soil that I have seen, every last person is talking about these fungus gnats. And then they go out and get these, the little sticky paper. Let me explain something to you. I used to watch hoarders. And I know y'all gonna say, why was I watching horror? So I can not be a horror. Um, that's a long story we're gonna get in there. But anyway, um, and on hoarders, they would have that fly paper. And all them all that little stuff be stuck to it to where when you bought the fly paper, it was either y'all don't mind this paint. I've been painting again. So I'm telling y'all. I'm on a mission. Anyway, um that fly paper started out yellow or white. And every time people turn the camera on, that fly paper is brown or black because it is covered with insects. I can't. I cannot. I'm just, I'm not built that way. I, I'm, I started in the greenhouse because I don't live out there. Them nets can fly till they wings fall off. In my house. And the same thing, it ain't just nets. It goes anything. Crawling, walking. If you don't have fur and whiskers, you're finna die. I'm, I'm just, I, I can't do that in my home. I just really can't. And, and, I've, and I've been like, I just, I don't like, anything got more than four legs, ain't got no fur, and got more than eight eyes. I can't, mm, -mm. That's not right. It's not right. It's, it's really not right. So, that's another reason why I don't start to stuff inside. Um, and then you could also say, well, yeah, you could use your own compost, worm casting, whatever. That's true, but guess what? Um, sometimes you still drag bugs in the house. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't be 100% for sure that you're not going to drag some type of bug or something in the house that you don't want in the house. So, that's another reason why I can't do uh, the, the starting indoors um, or whatever. But like I said, are there any drawbacks to starting indoors? Like, to me, the hard and off. I, I really that step to me I, I do not have time patience energy for that um and like I said I'm not saying that you got to be the same way but I'm just saying take these times just like I talked about in my beginners gardener series take these times to evaluate your personality the more you know yourself like I'm not saying you got to beat yourself up about it but what I'm saying is know yourself if you know you don't have patience for that quit trying to do stuff like that if you know like for instance it tickles me when I see people who know that they don't want a high maintenance garden but they have created this situation where they have a high maintenance garden and then they wonder why they kill everything because you don't want to do the maintenance you kind of want a garden that's just going to grow itself and you can do that because guess what enslaved africans did it the gardens that they had I'm, I'm, i want y'all to think about this when my ancestors were enslaved they was in the cotton field working for mass all day I use the term working like um they was in the cotton field all day they didn't have time to be tending on god the only time they the only day they had themselves was sunday and 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 master wanted you at church part of that day so when was you gonna have all this time to tend this god you really did so what you but but that didn't mean don't grow nothing because i'll have you to know if we didn't grow any gardens well we wouldn't be here because uh, them little scripts and scrap that they was given the enslaved, trust me, that didn't keep us alive. That didn't, that was just a little seasoning. They wasn't doing them them little pigtails and 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 uh, fatback and hog moths and stuff they were giving us and the feet and stuff. That was seasoning. 
that that wasn't that one sustenance. That that's not you cannot tell me, don't give me and I'm not knocking pig feet. But what I'm saying is, it ain't much nutrition in a pig foot. Let's just be real. It got hog flavor, gristle, fat, and skin. It, it ain't but a tat of meat on there. So you're not finna tell me it's a whole bunch of nutrition. Uh same thing with uh the, the jowls, the hog mouth. What nutrition is in it? The skin. Same thing with the lips and the ears. Ain't no, ain't no nutrition. There's a little scripts and scraps that was given us. We was living off our garden. That boy, I was seasoning. They just seasoned your little stuff. That's what that was for. You know, yeah, you had, and, and it put a little fat on you, you know. But that, that one, mm -mm. that one, what that was for. So yeah, we had gardens, but they was low maintenance. They knew how to, they knew how, how to grow stuff and didn't have to really tend it. So if you that type and don't want tend or going like, come on, please, please stop creating high maintenance. Go you know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying. Learn yourself, learn who you are. I have learned who I am and I have no business starting seasons. You know, because they're hard enough. I ain't got time for it. You start them in a greenhouse, you, I'm not going to say you don't have to hard them off at all, but the process is much faster. I'm going to be real. That's why most of the stuff, even stuff I do now, I don't start in the greenhouse because I done cook some stuff, take it out the greenhouse and cooked. You know what I'm saying? Like fooling around, left in the sun too long, cooked. Um, it just depends, you know, kind of depends on your situation. I know you're saying, how you cook something out of the greenhouse? Where my greenhouse was, it wasn't full sun all day. It was like part sun. So when the plants got exposed to full sun, they was like, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. But as, that's why the seedlings I have now, they're sitting in full sun. I don't have to worry about that. Like, I create scenarios to where I don't I don't have to put myself through undue stress because I know that this gardening is not all that I do. Um, more power to those that gardening is majority of what you do. Um, but I don't have that luxury at this point in my life. Maybe at some point in my life that's what I'm working towards um, to where I don't have to do nothing and but garden and do stuff for me. I don't have to work and, you know. I don't have to make bread, so. <laughs> but um, yeah. So that's all I wanted to tell y'all, pretty much. Um, just you know, think about what you want to do, how you want to start your seed. Um, I always factor in uh, your personality, your goals for your garden, what you're trying to do. Um, and, you know, think about some things. Uh, but yeah, this video is long enough. So, oh, wait, man. The cats didn't bother me. Yeah, what's really going on? Ooh, I might need to make another video. Anyway, till next time, I'll see you guys later.